In this lecture, we will uh, start by looking at the stability of negative feedback systems um, as a function of frequency. So, as we saw uh, previously, we are going to compare the, the loop gain in the Laplace domain uh, with minus 1 and as we said this can be split into two uh, sets of conditions. The first condition is that the magnitude of the loop gain uh, be greater than or equal to 1 and the second condition is that the angle of the loop gain uh, be minus 180 degrees. Now uh, these are called the Barkhausen criteria but more importantly for us what this tells us this gives us a bound on the stability of feedback systems on the uh, actually this sets a condition on the loop gain of the system. So what we'll do um, we will start looking at some simple systems of uh, one pole two pole three pole systems and see what implication there is for stability. So uh, just a reminder that the loop gain is the feedback factor f times a of s. So we will take some sample uh, systems. So let us start off with a one pole system. So in other words a of s is a naught by 1 plus s by omega p. This is the frequency response of a one pole uh, amplifier and uh, of course now we need to look at f times a of s. So uh, what we can say about this system is that uh, of course the poles are all in the left half plane which is good for us because normally when you have a resistor and a capacitor you will get left half plane poles. Normally uh, such a system will not uh, uh, you know behave in an unexpected manner. So then uh, we will look at the angle of the loop gain. Now it turns out that uh, for this particular system the at very low frequencies the angle of the loop gain is 0 and uh, at very high frequencies the angle of the loop gain uh, goes to minus 90 degrees. Um, So the loop gain angle spans 0 to 90 degrees, it can never reach, uh, it can never reach 180 degrees. Sorry, 0 to minus 90 degrees, it can never reach minus 180 degrees. So what this mean, means for us is that the system is unconditionally stable. And this is great news for us. What is the problem with the one pole system? As we have seen before, the uh, one pole system <coughs> uh, can only have limited gain. So the maximum gain that you can get, for example, from a common source amplifier, which was an example of a one pole system that we saw, is only the intrinsic gain of a transistor, which is approximately GMRDS. Now this GMRDS number is probably a few tens to maximum maybe uh, you know of uh, uh, maybe 100 or so in modern processes. So therefore uh, you know you just cannot get enough gain. Let us say GMRDS was 100 uh, that is just not good enough to build a good op amp. Uh, then next we try uh, to build a two pole system. If you look at a two pole system. Uh, we say that A of S is some A naught by 1 plus S by omega p the whole square. So in other words what I mean is I am cascading two one pole amplifiers. So for example, if the gain of a, a one pole amplifier was around 100, uh, if you cascade them, you can easily get a gain of 10,000. So that is good news for us. Now we need to look uh, at, uh, you know, look at the impact of doing this on stability. <laughs> so now uh, what do we know about this system? So the nice thing is again, it has left half plane poles. Uh, the phase 
uh, spans uh, 0 to minus 180 degrees but uh, but reaches minus minus 180 degrees only at omega equals infinity so technically this system is unconditionally stable <laughs> so this is also great news for us unfortunately if you look at the um, if you look at the uh, time domain response of the system as we know a two pole system uh, or rather a second order system is is defined by two parameters um, which is the natural frequency and the damping factor right so what this means is there will be a particular value of uh, uh, a naught on omega p where the system will start to ring what do we mean by saying the system will start to ring so normally you expect a well behaved system to only have an exponential solution it turns out a second order system is also capable of having a sinusoidal solution uh, which means the step response of the system could have ringing and we can easily calculate the value of uh, gain at which this happens uh, and this it turns out that this happens at a fairly low value of uh, a low value of uh, a naught f so this is a problem so even though the system is technically stable the transient response in closed loop could take a long long time to settle so that is a bad thing for us so now uh, we will take a three pole system and look at its response so what that means is that <laughs> f times uh, rather a of uh, a of s is a naught by 1 plus s by omega p the whole cubed in other words this system is created by cascading three one pole systems clearly the maximum possible value of a naught can be quite high uh, now let us look at uh, 1 plus lg of s uh, or rather let's look at the closed loop gain of the system it turns out that the closed loop gain uh, you can write it as some numerator polynomial by denominator polynomial I will give you the final expression I will leave this as a homework for you so it turns out the denominator polynomial d of s can be written in this fashion it can be uh, uh, written as a polynomial in this fashion so d of s is 1 plus um, 2s by omega p 2s by or rather a naught f omega p plus oh sorry so it is 1 plus 3 s by omega p into 1 plus a naught f plus 3 s squared by omega p squared into 1 plus a naught f plus uh, omega p cubed by I'm sorry <coughs> s cubed by omega p cubed into 1 plus a naught f so all I have done is I have taken this particular expression I have plugged it into the closed loop gain expression uh, which is 1 over f times f a f a of s by 1 plus f a of s and I have create made it look like a polynomial n of s over another polynomial d of s and I am looking at the denominator polynomial we know that the system becomes unstable when the denominator polynomial goes to 0 
So, um, what does that mean for us? We need to find out the roots of the denominator polynomial d of s. So, now I am going to make a simple substitution. I am going to say x is uh, s by omega p just to make my writing easier. So, what I am going to look at is uh, d of x is 1 plus 3x by 1 plus a naught f plus 3x squared by 1 plus a naught f plus x cubed by 1 plus a naught f and uh, which means I need to find out the roots of the uh, polynomial so roots of d of x equal to 0 <coughs> are the same as uh, roots of of uh, 1 plus a naught f plus 3x plus 3x squared plus 3x cubed equal to 0. Um, now the roots of this particular polynomial are the same as roots of 1 plus x the whole cubed uh, equals minus a naught f or x is equal to minus 1 minus uh, a naught f whole power 1 by 3 right now it is clear that uh, the cubed root of a naught f will have uh, three roots and uh, each one of them will give you a particular solution however it turns out uh, uh, it turns out that uh, for values of a naught f larger than a particular value the system uh, starts to have sinusoidal solutions and more importantly the uh, the complex conjugate roots corresponding to the sinusoidal solution move into the right half plane which clearly points to an unstable system because it points to a, a sinusoidal solution whose amplitude is increasing so it turns out that happens um, at a critical value of a naught f which is 8 for stability so what i mean is if if a naught f is greater than 8 so you have right half plane poles uh, with complex conjugate roots now as you can see this is clearly a problem because we started off assuming that you can cascade multiple single pole amplifiers to get more and more gain but this is telling you that uh, if you try to do that for example for a three pole system uh, even if the uh, loop gain is greater than 8 the system will start to become unstable remember that we want uh, a loop gain a naught f which is much much larger than 1 so you are talking about thousands or tens of thousands uh, type of numbers so this is clearly not the way to go in the next lecture we will see how we can achieve large a naught f while still maintaining stability